Hi, I'm glad you're here. Let's paint a little southwestern scene today. I'm Wilson Bickford. I'm going to be using some of my signature oil painting products to do this little painting demonstration for you. This is going to be a painting right from one end to the other, something that you'll be able to do with just a few colors and a few tools out of my product line. I'm going to be using one of my uh, signature canvas panels today, which are MDF core, very warp resistant, really nice professional quality panels. And I'm thinking of some sort of a southwestern scene. Um, on my palette today, I have cerulean blue, cobalt blue hue, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, dioxazine purple, and titanium white. And I'm going to be using some of the uh, Wilson Bickford uh, fast flow white medium that I've got over here on a disposable palette, just a little puddle poured out here. I'll take my two inch scenery brush. And I'm going to lubricate the canvas with a nice thin coat of this white medium. This will make my colors very blendable. Everything I put on the canvas from here on out. Now this scrubs on a little hard because the canvas is dry. Once the canvas is wet with this medium, the colors will flow right on. We can get nice soft gradations and tonal variations where we want them and soft edges. And unfortunately, I've never been to the Southwest, but I really like the color schemes. That you see out there a lot of blues and oranges. Um, if you're not aware of uh, color wheel in necessarily, um, orange and blue are complementary colors on a color wheel, which means they are supposedly, the theory is, they are visually appealing when used together. And I think that's part of the appeal of the southwestern colors. There's a lot of oranges and blue sky and that sort of thing, and they're just very visually appealing. So I'm just going to scrub in a nice thin coat with this two inch scenery brush. As you see me flicking hairs off, it's just that this is a brand new brush and it's shedding a little bit, as all new brushes do. Okay, let's get right into this. I'm gonna take some cerulean blue into the dirty white brush. And I'm just gonna leave my palette laying here for convenience sake. Um, I'm gonna take a little bit of cerulean blue. Atmospheric perspective says that anything in the distance is a lighter value, that includes the sky. So if the sky is a long ways away, the lower sky on the lower horizon will be a little bit lighter value. Value simply means how light or dark a color is. So I'm gonna have this be quite pale down here so it looks like it's a long ways away. The sky that's more over your head will be the darker sky which will be higher on this canvas. So I'm gonna switch over here and take some of the cobalt blue, which is a little darker. I want a deeper, darker blue here at the top of the canvas. That will make this area down here at the horizon appear farther away. I'm gonna go even stronger yet. The nice part of painting is you can adjust your colors as you go. Blue is my favorite color, so I'm gonna pour some blue on here. Now, I want these to melt together, so that's where that white base coat comes in handy that I put on earlier. I can just kind of do a crisscross stroke and just weave those colors together. I'm gonna want this a little bit darker yet at the top sky. That's an easy adjustment. Painting is like making soup. You always have to test it and taste it and see where, you, where you're at, how much more salt or pepper or whatever you need. So now that I've tasted that, I'm gonna put a little more blue in there. Oils are very easy to uh, change in midstream. Um, acrylics are drying while you're doing this. Nothing against acrylics. I use acrylics too. But you have to have your game on for that to get in here and get the blending done quickly with acrylics. Oils, you can always change your mind and just do it at any point. So that makes it pretty easy. I'm going to end up taking my fan brush and I'm going to take some white, little touch of the burnt sienna just to warm it up a little bit. Slightly orange. Burnt sienna is actually a dark orange. So I'm going to put a little bit of sienna with that white just to make it like a cream color. And I'm, I'm looking at big cumulus clouds here today. Now I'm going to come back and highlight these differently. But I basically just kind of use the corner of the brush and just do a little wiggle jiggle with the brush. Which drives my students nuts most of the time because they have a hard time duplicating that. But it's just... Uh, that I'm not doing anything too specific. Now I'm picking up blue off the brush as I do that, so I'm going to keep wiping that off. But basically, you just need to be random. Um, a 
a lot of people give a fan brush a bad rap and they say, oh, those fan brushes are no good for anything. That's because people tend to do this and they stamp with them. And you get stuff that looks like eyebrows. I don't do that. Um, if you hadn't seen me do that, you wouldn't know that I used a fan brush to do it. That's because I've gotten pretty good over the years at hiding my tracks so it's not blatantly obvious what tool I use to do whatever effect I'm after. That's half the battle with painting. You want to kind of do it in a way that doesn't necessarily give away how you did it. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Um, now I want to put a little more light on the tops of some of those. So I'm just going to swish this out in some paint thinner. And I'm going to take pure white this time, maybe just a tad of that white base coat to thin it down a little bit so it'll stick to the canvas a little easier. Thin paint will stick over this thicker paint. By the way, these paints are all really thick and pasty, almost like caulk. They're very thick, and they're made for the purpose of putting wet paint on top of wet paint. If you put down a heavy, thick underlayer, you can get subsequent layers to stick to it by thinning them down. Now, I can thin paint down either with that white medium, or I can actually dip in and get a few drops of paint thinner on the brush. It'll do the same thing. See, I got some warm tones in there from the Sienna. Kind of subtle, but I didn't really want it to set right up and scream. I'll put a little bit of highlight on the top of this. As I'm highlighting, I'm looking for two things. I'm trying to make it a little more interesting as far as the shape goes. And uh, I want to get a little bit brighter, a little more contrast. See, if I fade the bottoms of those clouds away, they look like they're anchored to the sky and connected there like they should be. Notice how often I'm wiping the brush, too, um, because you're going to pick up a lot of the blue sky color as you do this. Okay, now way off in the distance. I've heard of it. Like I said, I've never seen it, but I know there's a place out here that they call the Painted Desert, and I'm assuming it's because it looks like it's painted. I've seen photos of it, so I kind of know what it looks like. I'm just going by rote here and by uh, memory, basically. If I want to soften that out, I would use my one inch mop brush. It's very soft. And if I use a light touch, I can kind of minimize any brush marks. Some people like to leave the brush marks. I tell my students all the time, uh, Van Gogh would have put more brush marks in here and Da Vinci would have blended it a little more. Uh, Van Gogh's work is nothing but big, thick, bold brush strokes. So there's no right or wrong in that. It depends on what you want to show and what your own personal style and feeling about it is. So I can soften that right out and take some of the harshness out of that with my mop brush. It's excellent for that. Okay, I'm going to come in and I'm going to paint some far away desert way back here somewhere. And I'm going to put in different colors. You'll see that I'm going to start out maybe with that. And then I'm going to take a little bit of the dioxazine purple, which is really, really strong. So I'm just going to blend that right into the sienna. And they don't call it the Painted Desert for nothing. There's all these colors, bands of color in it. When you look at photos of this, there's bands of color in there, which makes it very interesting. I'm going to go a little stronger purple here and there. And see, I'm just kind of literally weaving the colors together, bumping them into each other and not looking for stripes necessarily. I'm letting them melt into each other. I'm going to go back with a little more sienna something a little stronger, more orangey as it gets closer. And the desert isn't all just uh, siennas and purples and that sort of thing. Sometimes you see little touches of green. I don't have green on my palette, but as we all know, if I take some blue, I'll take the cobalt blue and a little bit of this yellow ochre, I can make something that's green. a few little touches of that in there. Now see, if I leave that horizon as a hard line, it kind of tends to bring it a little closer. So, you know, sometimes you'll see the horizon as a hard edge like that. It depends on the atmosphere of the given day. Now if I want to push that back a little farther, I can take my nice soft mop brush and watch this disappear. I'm just trying to soften that very top edge of that. Notice how that makes it indistinct. It shoves that back a million miles away. Look how far away that is. The whole thing with painting is you're trying to show distance and depth on a flat surface where you really don't have any. 
So you always exaggerate what you can and play up certain things to, to make that happen.